Could I just say on behalf of my, uh, uh, me and my wife, just say um, how delighted we are to host you all here. Not only to be able to recognise uh, you guys, uh, but also recognise the families and friends. Because um, having been uh, in an organisation made up of volunteers, I know that I could never have done my job without the support of my family and also my uh, friends as well. And it, uh, it, it is absolutely vital to have uh, a team behind you. Otherwise, these guys couldn't do what they do. So to all of you, you are most welcome. And it's lovely to uh, see you in Government House. And I hope that you didn't go down um, with the hypothermia or frostbite or anything like that. Uh, now, I I'm just about to hand over to uh, Mark. But before I do, I'd just like to say a couple of comments if I may. Um, we had a plan this year for me to try and get round all the, uh, the stations. And one should never start any presentation or talk with an apology, apology but I apologise, I have failed. Um, we, we've now decided we've got a new timeline, like any failures, you just extend the timeline. And um, I will try and get, <coughs> obviously, uh, went to Laxey and had a terrific time at uh, Laxey, but I'm well aware, Russian, Phil, Kurt Michael, and never forget Ramsey. Um, I've, I've, I've not managed to, to come along to see you. It will happen, I promise you, and if it doesn't happen, it's all his fault. <laughs> um, we had a great time at, at Laxey. We also actually had a bumper bonus this year. We, we met Red Watch from Douglas, who came at about 3.30 in the morning when the alarm went, and it was lovely <laughs> greeting them again, um, because last year we met them at least twice and maybe three times as well. Um, something to do with a slightly temperamental. Uh, system here, um, but it was it was a terrific experience to be able to go and talk to the uh, uh, the team at uh, Laxey, and I hope that I'll be able to do that with uh, all the other ones. Uh, well, definitely this by this time next year, and hopefully before that. So once again, terrific to see you all here. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Well done to all of you. Mark. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can I just add? Um, Welcome, Government House. I think a uh, real special night uh, ahead of us. And I think you'll all agree uh, it's a real fitting uh, backdrop to what hopefully will be a special evening, as I said. Um, can I just take the opportunity to thank Seth Huntie and Lady Lorimer and all the team at Government House uh, for putting this on tonight. Um, they do all the hard work, to be honest, uh, and we just sort of pitch up at here at half past six. So thank you very much for all the team here at Pleasure. Government House. Pleasure. Um, as Seth Huntie's already mentioned, and it's lovely to see so many uh, family and friends here tonight. Um, the career of a firefighter, there will be some difficult times, and without family and friends and loved ones, uh, it'd be really difficult for us all to function as we do at work. So it is really lovely to see so many people here tonight uh, to support um, the fantastic people we're going to speak about in the next few minutes. Um, tonight's presentation is slightly different to normal. We've got a series of 20-year uh, long service and good conduct medals, and then after that we've got a series of 30-year uh, claps uh, in recognition of 30 years service. Um, but we'll start off with the 20 year medals that are produced by the Royal Mint in recognition of 20 years long service and good conduct. These medals are individually engraved with the officers' names on them and are produced uh, only once uh, an officer has served uh, at least 20 years, and as I said, it is for good service, uh, long service, sorry, and good conduct. I'm looking around here tonight, I'm just wondering about the second part. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on. Um, Following the formal presentation, there will be pl plenty of opportunity to take photographs, so if you don't get the perfect, perfect shot of your loved one coming up, don't worry, there'll be a chance afterwards to take some more photographs in here, and also out in the hallway with the staircase, uh, the, the, the main staircase. So um, don't worry too much if you don't get the perfect shot. Um, so without further delay, I'll hand over to uh, John Murta, Deputy Chief Fire Officer, who will say a few words about uh, the following people who are coming up for their 20-year long service now. Thank you. Okay, remember, remember guys, we can't laugh at ourselves, something's going seriously wrong. Um, the first victim, uh, sorry, uh, recipient tonight, <coughs> Jim Callister from Kurt Michael. Do you enjoy the service following in his mum's footsteps? I mean, on uh, 1st of November 2002, uh, Jim is a credit to the station and uh, we look forward to another 10 years or so. Jim, come forward to us. <laughs>
Next day, we have some officer Martin calling from Douglas. Martin joined the service as an on-call firefighter at Douglas Station on the 1st of April 2000, April Fool's Day. On the 4th of December the same year, Martin became a whole-time firefighter. He has since been promoted to leading firefighter in August 2013 and has been a sub-officer since February 2015. Martin joining the service continues the family tradition of the callers, who have been quite simply fire service loyal, air royalty. If you listen to their stories, particularly from Arthur and Gaza, about the service, they go back quite literally hundreds of years. Martin is also a founding member of the service's breathing apparatus instructors and compartment fire behavioural trainers. Um, this group of trainers and our live fire facility enabled us to train our personnel in hot fire environments without the need to travel off island. So it's a massive, massive plus for us. Martin is currently operating as a fire safety officer, but has unfortunately been off sick with a neck injury sustained in a fall. We wish him well in his recovery and look forward to him returning to work. Martin. Parsons from Laxey Station. Neil joined the service on the 1st of November 2002. Outside of the service, Neil has many business interests, including having a pizza business and being an undertaker. So I hope he doesn't mix up the boxes on these two jobs. <laughs> Firefighter Mark Quayle, again from Laxey Station. Looking very nervous there, Mark. <laughs> Mark joined the service on the 1st of November 2002 as well. <laughs> the final one for the 20 year medals tonight is uh, Mark Whiteley from Port Aaron on Russian Station. Mark joined the service on the 1st of February 2003 and until recently when he's left the service. I don't know why he's smiling and staring at me. <laughs> Mark served at Port Aaron for over 20 years and attended a wide variety of incidents. Mark attended one of the biggest fires in recent times at Brad Ahead and worked hard along with everybody else who attended that weekend. <laughs> Mark has recently left the service and we wish him and his family all the best for the future. Remember, you've left the service, but you never leave the fire service family. Mark. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, can we just have one more round of applause for all our recipients? <laughs> okay, we now move on to uh, a new award that's um, in recognition of 30 years. Um, it's a 30 year clasp, um, and this is the first time we've uh, presented these. And we start off with Chris Main. Sorry, Chris, stay there. Chris joined the service in 1992 on his 18th birthday and serves at Kurt Michael Station. Uh, he was part of recruit course 0692 and trained alongside uh, Richard and Dave who are here, both here tonight as well. Uh, for Chris, the fire service was a family tradition as his father, Dougie, was a station officer at Kurt Michael and had served there for many years. Uh, and earlier this year, there was another proud moment for the main family. When Chris's youngest uh, his son Noah joined him at Kurt Michael Station, being the third generation to serve out at Kurt Michael. <laughs> Chris was promoted to Firefighter in 2021 and has brought a wealth of experience from his day job at the airport. He's always one of the first to step forward for community and charity events at the station and is still keen even after 31 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris. <laughs> Not to. <laughs> <laughs> my boss, so yeah. <laughs> Mark joined on the 1st of October 1990 and has now completed over 33 years. 
His colleagues will do scribe mark as a cheeky chappy who has comic timing and as a Peter Pan of the fire service, as he doesn't seem to age like the rest of us. Coming from farm and stock, Mark's never been shy of hard work, and oh boy, he likes his food. I can recall many occasions when we've been on duty, such as the TT races at the grandstand, and we've been provided a packed lunch to last us a day. By 9.30 in the morning, Mark's already finished the packed lunch, <laughs> and he's hunting around for more food. Mark started his promotion journey in 2004 as a leading fighter, and quickly became a sub-officer in 2005. He's probably one of the longest serving sub officers we've ever had, having uh, undertaken that role for 11 years before being promoted to station officer in fire safety. And during this time, when I look round at our middle and senior management team, there's probably no one who hasn't benefited from Mark's development over the years. Fitness has always been very important for Mark, and when he joined, he was 11 stone on his application form, and he's probably one of the only people I know after 33 years in the job. That he, still, that he now weighs less than when he joined, <laughs> especially with the amount of food he eats. <laughs> Mark has always been very keen to take part in physical challenges, and he was part of the team that clinched the Guinness World Record uh, for completing the 24-hour ladder climb. And more recently, he was part of the team that undertook the Six Peaks Challenge alongside colleagues who were 25-plus years his junior. Like normal, Mark pushed on through and made it look easy whilst uh, also raising over two and a half thousand pounds for charity, which is an outstanding effort. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Hayley. <laughs> okay, next up, um, Dave Madrill, or, or Maddie as he's known in the service. Uh, Dave joined the service in 1992 and serves at Port Aaron Station. Dave was one of 13 firefighters on that course, uh, one of the only ones here tonight is, is Chris May and Richard Watson, sorry. Um, lost my train of thought, that story. Um, over the years, Dave has taken uh, on additional studies such as risk assessment, qualifications, and attended hot fire courses at Lancashire and the Fire Service College. Even after 31 years' service, Dave is <coughs> professional and as enthusiastic, enthusiastic as the day he joined. So, can I please ask Dave to come up and collect his thingy? <laughs> <laughs> David Crane, and we could be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> David joined the retained service in Castletown on the 1st of November 1991, and David followed in his father's footsteps, who was a station officer at the time at Castletown Station. David went through basic training uh, with Ferret Curphy, who's also here tonight, um, in the retained service. In 1996, David was successful in his application for whole time and took the big step to move from Castletown into Douglas. David worked hard over the following years, taking a number of uh, opportunities around the service. And in 2021, David was promoted to leading firefighter, and in 2022 to sub-officer, following many years of study. <coughs> David has now served over 32 years uh, service, and still sets very high standards for himself and his watch. <coughs> Recently, I received a letter from a former Deputy Chief Fire Officer who had witnessed David earlier this year attending a person's reported a serious house fire in Lower Douglas. The retained officer was so impressed with David's handling of the incident, he felt that he had to write in to commend David's actions and professionalism. It's a great honour for me to welcome David up to be seen in the past. Richard Richard. <laughs> so, so tonight, for one night only, Richard. Richard joined in 1992, serving at Ramsey Station and uh, attended the same recruit courses, Dave Madrill and Chris Mayne. At the time of joining, Richard was a reservist and served in the TA Royal Engineers, and his professionalism and dedication was clear to see from the beginning of his fire service career, and is still as strong now as the day he joined. His colleagues simply describe him as someone who just likes to help people. Over the years, Richard has studied health and safety qualifications and is one of only three RTC instructors within the retained service, teaching RTC techniques to not only his own station, but also those at Border Ramsey. He's one of a small number of people at Ramsey who provide vital daytime cover, and without which uh, we wouldn't be able to provide a daytime asset. 
Please put your hands together and welcome to Richard. He's looking very nervous. Paul <laughs> <laughs> joined the service as an apprentice mechanic in 1984. John. <laughs> <laughs> Carl's just mentioned there that could have been worse, but when I actually sat down to look at this, most of them stories you couldn't tell. <laughs> Uh, next up, Ferrick. Ferrick Kirby. Ferrick joined the service in 1991 at the age of 18 and attended the uh, recruit course um, 0191 with Dave Crane. Ferrick is a self employed farmer uh, working and living in Kurt Michael, which has proven uh, vital to keep the stations like Kurt Michael on the run where employment opportunities are fairly limited in the daytime. In 2003, Ferrick was promoted to leading firefighter and gained a number of qualifications, including incident plan level one, which allows him to take charge of incidents up to two uh, pumps. Ferrick has often provided 168 hours uh, per week on call to ensure that the appliance available in Kirk Michael, uh, shooting to ensure, sorry, there is a plant available in Kirk Michael day and night, and this is on top of him managing his own farm. In 2021, Ferrick was promoted to sub-officer and is still on the first names down on the list, for community and charity events. Without people like Ferrick, stations like Kurt Michael just simply wouldn't exist. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you. John joined the service in 1991, following a brief spell at sea with the Royal Navy. However, he doesn't like to talk about this. <laughs> John was promoted in, uh, to a leading firefighter in 2000, to in 2003, stationed in 2004, and ADO in 2008, and served mainly in the fire safety department. In 2013, he was appointed, uh, he was appointed deputy chief fire officer, and a role he still undertakes today. Since 2013, John has steered the service through some very difficult financial times, and often this work uh, goes unnoticed by most. Even after 32 years, he's normally the first person in the office in the morning and the last to leave at the end of the day. And, and every day he comes in uh, up for the new challenge and wants to make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, John Mercer. <laughs> Joined the service in 1993 and served at Ramsey Fire Station. By 2000, he was promoted to lead the firefighter and sub officer uh, in 2018. Over the years, Simon has studied health and safety qualifications and is a level one incident, command, uh, incident commander, seeing him take charge of pumps up to two incidents. Uh, sorry, incidents, say that right now. Incidents up to two pumps. Over the years, Simon has been very generous uh, with his time when it comes to undertaking maintenance at Ramsey Station particularly his joinery work, which is, one of, which is Simon's primary employment. Over the years, he's fitted new kitchens, storage units, new lecture room facilities, all to make the station where he works a better place. I do need to mention, mention Simon's on-call availability. On average this year, Simon's provided over 143 hours per week, and is often in excess of 155 hours per week, and is one of them people that provides daytime, vital daytime cover at Ramsey, on day to Friday. Again, without people like Simon, we simply wouldn't be able to provide uh, a daytime capability in the north of the island. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Simon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think you all agree um, 
we've just witnessed some amazing people here tonight. And when I just did some total up earlier, between a lot of them, um, it's 391 years of service here tonight for this uh, civic community of the Isle of Man, which I think is amazing. So I um, hope you will join me in one last time. A round of applause for us. <laughs> doing some money.